Hi, I'm Rose, and I make cute and useful things for D&D. Today, I'm rolling a character for a new campaign I'm playing in, and I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to show you how to. Feel free to follow along while you create your own. The basic steps for creating your character are choosing your background, race or ancestry and class, rolling your ability scores, noting down your race or ancestry features, calculating your ability score modifiers, noting down your background and class features, and finally finishing up your sheet by calculating a few last things. We'll go through all of this together in more detail, step by step. To roll your character sheet, you will need either a copy of the player's handbook, or you can search the various options online if you don't have this. You can also use various supplementals. For example, I'll be using the Ancestry and Culture system, which is an alternative to race in 5th edition. You'll also need a character sheet. There's a default version included in the handbook, but there are also many fun designs available from creators all over these days. These are some of my favorite that I've made, and I'll have these and the Ancestry and Culture book linked below if you want to use them too. Finally, you'll need a pencil and an eraser. The information on your sheet will change plenty of times, so it's best not to commit by using a pen. So, of course, when you're ready to fill in your character sheet, you're going to need an idea of who your character is going to be. There are three main choices you need to have made before you start filling things in. Namely, your character's background, their race or ancestry, and their class. Your character's background is essentially the things that they have learned in the past that benefit them today. There are lots of options for backgrounds, from sneaky charlatans and criminals, to lonely hermits, to majestic folk heroes and wretched urchins. Pick one that you feel suits your character best. Your character's race represents the traits they've inherited from their parents and that they share with their kin. There are various race options to choose from in the handbook, but as I mentioned before, I prefer to use the ancestry and culture system, which removes the more problematic elements from the way they're written in the player's handbook, and in turn gives more diverse and interesting options for character creation. Finally, your character's class is a set of special skills and talents that you'll develop as you gain levels during the game. There are lots to choose from, for example you could be a fighter that has honed their skills with weapons, or a wizard who's studied hard to learn all manner of useful spells. Once you've chosen your background, race or ancestry, and class, you're then ready to begin filling in your sheet. My character is going to be a baking bunny who makes healing cakes. So, for my background, I've chosen Guild Artisan as that reflects my life so far spent in the bakery. For my ancestry, I've chosen Fablin as they are woodland creatures. And I've chosen a Hobbin Hills culture as she's from a cozy farm town. Finally, I've chosen Cleric as her class as I want her to have divine healing abilities so that our party will have a healer on the team. To begin, we're going to generate a set of six numbers. These will be your ability scores, which represent how good you are at the six abilities used in the game. These abilities are Strength, Dexterity, Constitution, Intelligence, Wisdom and Charisma. There are different methods of generating this set of six numbers. You should ask your game master which method they prefer you to use. To cover these methods briefly, they are the standard array. You have a set of predetermined numbers, which are 15, 14, 13, 12, 10 and 8. You can roll your numbers. You roll four six-sided dice and add up the results, discarding the lowest number each time. You do this six times to get your set of six numbers. Finally, point buy. You have 27 points to spend on your ability scores, and you use these points to buy your six numbers. This table shows how much each score costs to buy. However you arrive at having your set of six numbers, it's now time to choose which ability will get each number. Where to assign each number is entirely up to you, but the general advice is to pair the highest numbers with the abilities that your class uses the most. Today, I'm going to be using the method of rolling to get my ability scores. Here are the numbers that I rolled. I'm going to be putting the highest score in Wisdom, as that is the ability that my class uses to cast spells. Otherwise, I'm going to prioritize putting the best roles into Charisma, Intelligence, and Constitution. This is because I want my character to be good at talking, investigating, and surviving attacks, respectively. <laughs> Whether you've chosen a race or an ancestry and culture combination, you should be able to find the following information related to this, and you can now note that down on your sheet. We start with the ability score increase. One or two scores will increase based on your character's lineage, so change these numbers accordingly. My ability score increase comes from my character's hobbin culture, who are hardy farmers and generational artisans. It means that my strength increases by two, and my wisdom by one. Note down your speed, size, and age. I've chosen Fablin, the forest critters, who have a walking speed of 25, and are in the small size category. There are various other features that your choice of lineage will afford you. You should note these down where you see fit on your sheet. For example, I'm choosing hopping legs, which means I can walk fast and jump far, and keen senses, which gives me advantage on perception checks that are based on smell and sound. 
Now that we've noted the race or ancestry features, it's time to calculate the modifiers for your ability scores. You'll use these modifiers a lot during games, as you add it to any relevant roles. You can calculate each modifier by taking 10 off the number and then dividing it by 2, rounding the final number down if necessary. So 15 minus 10 is 5, divided by 2 is 2.5, and then rounded down is 2. So the modifier is plus 2. If you don't want to calculate these, use this table instead, which lists what each modifier is for each ability score. Now it's time to note down the background and class features. Starting with background, let's note the following. You can find this in the information provided with the background you've chosen for your character. Skill proficiencies. Your background means that you're particularly good at certain skills already. You'll find each of these skills on your character sheet, and for now, just mark them so that you know which ones you're proficient in. You may also have other proficiencies, for example, with a disguise kit. You can note those in the features section. Be sure to use shorthand, as there's never enough space for the long-worded version of everything your character is likely to be able to do. On your role-playing sheet, you can add which languages you know and your personality traits, and if you don't like the ones provided with your chosen background, it's absolutely fine to come up with some of your own instead. You can also now add your gold and your equipment to your inventory page. Now to note down your class features. You'll find everything you need in the information provided for your chosen class. We start with the hit dice. When you take a short rest, you can choose to heal up using hit dice. Your class feature should tell you which die you'll need to use here. Mine is a d8. You'll have a maximum amount of hit dice that you can roll to replenish your hit points. Add this to the sheet and then during play, you can note down how many you've used. These reset once your character has taken a long rest. On to hit points. You have a maximum amount of hit points that needs to be calculated. At level 1, your hit points are equal to the maximum number of your hit die plus whatever your constitution modifier is. So my hit die is a d8 and my constitution modifier is plus 3. So in this case, 8 plus 3 means I have 11 hit points. You should make a mark next to the skills and abilities for their respective proficiencies and saving throws. The armor, weapons and tools proficiencies can be written on the sheet. There are some classes that allow you to use double your proficiency bonus on certain roles, and that's referred to as expertise. You can mark these skills a second time to indicate that these skills have double proficiency. Your class also provides you with some starting equipment. You should add this to your inventory. It's also helpful to note the weapons you think you'll use the most on the main sheet for quick reference. There will be other features that your class has too, which should be divided across the other areas of the character sheet in any way that you wish to organise that information. Some features might add new resources to track, such as a sorcerer's sorcery points or arrows for a longbow. There are some class-specific sheets that are perfect for tracking these sorts of resources. I'll link them down below. If you're a spellcaster, you'll also need to add your spellcasting ability, your spell save DC, and your spell attack modifier to the spells page. You will also have spell slots and an amount of known spells as part of your class. You can choose which spells you already know and note them on your spell list. Some classes, such as Druid and Cleric, choose from a list of spells each day, which means their known spells can regularly change. Class-specific sheets already come with this list you can choose from, but you can also note down which spells you've chosen each day as you go. We're nearly finished. Now that you have all of your ability score modifiers and skill proficiencies in place, you can determine all of your skill bonuses, plus a few other features. We start with your proficiency bonus. You should be able to find this in your class information. For a first level character, it's plus two. Now let's look at your skills. Every skill is connected to an ability score. We're now going to calculate each skill bonus based on what we've marked down so far. A skill bonus is calculated very easily. It's simply the ability score modifier. If you are proficient with it, which you marked down before, you also add your proficiency bonus to this number. If you have expertise in the skill, then you add double your proficiency bonus to it. In this example, you can see that the intelligent skill bonuses are all three, because that's the intelligence modifier, but I am proficient in history, and so I add two to that, which gives me five for history. Do this for all the skills, and now they're ready to go. Let's finish off this sheet now with the final few numbers. This is very easy. Initiative. Your initiative is equal to your dexterity bonus. For passive perception, this number should be 10 plus whatever your perception skill bonus is. Your armor class is important. This is the number that enemies need to beat when they're rolling to hit you. If you're not wearing armor, this number should be 10 plus your dexterity modifier. If you are wearing armor, the value will change and that information can be found with the type of armor that you've chosen to wear. Now to note down your weapon details. Like individual skills, individual weapons are associated with an ability score. In general, this is dexterity for ranged weapons and strength for melee weapons. 
You can determine the attack bonus by either starting with the dexterity or strength modifier, whichever one is relevant, and then, if you are proficient with that weapon, adding your proficiency bonus. For the weapon damage, this will be the weapon's damage die, which can be found with the info for the weapon, plus your strength or dexterity modifier, whichever is relevant. The damage type can also be found with the information for the weapon. And overall, your character sheet should now be finished. As you level up, some of these numbers will change, and you will gain more features from your class as you go. This means it's always good to leave plenty of space or have an extra sheet on hand to make sure there's enough room for all the features. And remember, always use a pencil. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know if there are any more tutorials like this that you'd like me to cover. Or if you have questions, leave them in the comments or send them to me on Twitter or Instagram. Otherwise, subscribe for more D&D videos and I'll see you soon.